Ranger, Dr. Banfield. Ben? Hmm? Yes, Ruthie? Why do so many women keep their... <laughs> What's that bought on? Well, look at the news on the Times building. Oh? The Italian count killed by beautiful American wife. I saw this picture in the paper this morning. He was so handsome. That cute little mustache. Oh? Now, why would any woman want to shoot a man like that? Well, I uh, see, in this particular case, I imagine it involves the basic psychology of a caged animal's desire to be free. Well, now say it so I can understand it. Well, you see, men of the world will consider their wives something to be seen and worshipped only in the privacy of the home. They allow them little or no freedom whatsoever. So, to gain their freedom, they kill their husbands. <laughs> Which, of course, doesn't settle the problem at all, as they will undoubtedly spend the rest of their lives caught up in some nasty jail. Now, you see? Uh-huh. Say, Dan. Hmm? Why don't you go on the stage? Dr. Daniel Danfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. There's an interesting case for the doctor today... Let's call it the case of the bird in the gilded cage. Uh, Rusty, did you see that circular that came recently from Tristan's bookstore? Circular? Yes, yes, the one suggesting that I buy a copy of Barton Drake's new book as a Christmas present for a friend. Oh, Barton Drake, the detective? Uh-huh. But Christmas is over. Yes, yes, I know, and I forgot to get a present for the guy I like most of all. Oh, yeah. Me. Oh, damn, you egotistical. Yeah, let's see, uh... Yes, here it is. Well, come on, Rusty. You want to take a walk? Sure, where to? To the bookstore, of course. Isn't that uh, where you generally buy a book? Well, good morning, folks. Good morning. Something for you? Uh, a book, perhaps? Yes, yes. I received a card from you announcing Barton Drake's latest book. Oh, to be sure, to be sure. A very fine book. I read it myself. You see, I love mystery stories. Simply love them. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Christian, I'd like to... I have it right here, Dr. Danville. <laughs> right here. Dan, how does he know who you are? Anybody who listens to the radio knows who Dr. Danville is. <laughs> I love detectives. Now, here's the book. That will be three dollars. Okay, here you are. Thank you, Doctor. Three out of ten. Uh, oh, my. What's the matter, Mr. Tristan? Did you ever see a ten-dollar bill before? I'm sorry, folks. I'm very sorry. A brand new bill. <laughs> Just uh, get it from your bank? <laughs> of course not. I made it myself. Now, uh, please give me my tank, will you? We're in a hurry. Made it you got? Oh, that's very good. Here you are, sir, your change and the book. Thank you, Mr. Tristan. Come on, Rusty, let's go. I hope this book is all it's packed up to me. Oh, you like it? I loved it, my son. Oh, simply loved it. Now, let me see. Uh, serial number L45735690. C. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, operator, could you get me Secret Service leave? Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> and hurry. Oh, my, this is so exciting. <laughs> hey, 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 hello, uh, Secret Service. Yes, well, this is Thaddeus Tristan of Tristan's Bookstore. I've just taken an account of the $10 bill. Mm-hmm. And I know who made it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was Dr. Daniel Danfield. <laughs> but then, oh, he said so himself. <laughs> To return for the second act of Danger, Doctor Danfield. But first, and now back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Doctor Danfield. Hey, you know, Rusty, this fellow Barton Drake isn't bad. Now, the way he handled that. Isn't there something more important to do than read that old book? Oh, for instance. Well, for instance. Talking to me. Oh, Rusty. For that, I prefer soft lights and a soft device. Mm -hmm. A prosaic old office like this isn't very conducive. Oh, you see who's at the door, Rusty? Of 
Christmas Day, it's all off. Yes? Crying? Hey, well, well, I like that. Are you Danfield? I suppose so. That's the name on the door, isn't it? Did you buy a book at Tristan's bookstore this morning? Why, uh, yes, yes. But I can't see that that's any of your business. Uh, you paid for it with a $10 bill. Dan, what's he Why, do? Rusty? Why, uh, yes. Yes, I believe I did. Uh, Tristan says you made the bill yourself. Did you? <laughs> that? <laughs> oh, sure. I run them off by the dozen. Now, listen, my friend, I don't like people barging in here knocking over my secretary and otherwise making themselves distasteful. So if you haven't any more jokes to tell, I'd be very much obliged if you went back to where you came from. Now, don't get sore, mister. I came here to do you a favor. Like accusing me of being a counterfeiter? <laughs> much obliged. You know, that was the best piece of queer I've seen in months. Any guy who can turn out stuff like that's an artist. Now, I've got a proposition. Dan, I, uh... how does he know you bought a book at Tristan's Yeah, uh, That's easy. I was in the back of the store while you were uh, consummating the deal. I see. And uh, this proposition? Just what kind of a proposition? Well, now, suppose there was a little organization. Yes, go on. Now, all you have to do is make the stuff. The organization buys it at 50 cents on the dollar and uh, floats it on the market. That way, everybody makes money and uh, you don't take any of the risk. Oh, sounds simple. Mm, it's a cinch. Mm, no, I don't think so. We've been doing all right by ourselves. We don't have to split with anybody. Oh, you're going to play it that way. Lone wolf, huh? Well, let me tell you, Dr. Danfield, the boys aren't going to like that. Oh? Counterfeiting is a closed shop in this town. They uh, aren't going to like it, huh? No, they aren't. And, uh, I don't like you. And here's something to prove it. <laughs> oh. Wow, right on the button. Rusty, what's your language? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know I was that good. If you could only love like you can fight. We'll uh, get to that later. Hmm? Right now, it looks like we're about to really make some money. Money? What do you mean? I think we've hit a pot of gold. Danny, please. They pay off double for guys like this, too. Oh? Who do you think he is? I think he's the weakest link in this town's counterfeiting chain. We'll know for sure when we turn him in for the reward. Oh, that's wonderful. Now I can have that. You better throw a cup of water in his face, Rusty. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Better search him first. Might find some evidence. Uh, you take the pocket on that side. Okay. Yeah, I don't care for his choice of cigarettes. Well, well, a very good gun. Here's his billfold. Good. Uh, throw it over here, will you? Thanks. Now maybe we can find out who to notify in case of an accident. That's what I like about. Holy cow! What's the matter? Oh, what an actor this guy turned out to be. Hey, Dan, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Nothing, nothing at all. Uh, only if these credentials are correct, I just knocked out a member in good standing of the United States Treasury Department. Is it something you say? A uh, book, perhaps? Oh. oh, my. It's my friend from the Secret Service. <laughs> Did you capture Dr. Danfield? Capture him? Uh, he hit me on the chin and escaped. Ah, he's a slippery customer. Very slippery. Yeah, not only that, but he's got a lift like a mule. When I get my hands on him, I'll fix uh, I might be of a little help. Oh, you might, huh? <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. I have an idea that at this very moment, you can find him at Senor Castillo's art gallery. Yeah, what makes you think that? Don't make any answer that. I just know, that's all. <laughs> well, it's worth a try. But if he isn't there, I'll be back. Oh, this is so exciting. Dan, I still think we should have brought that Secret Service man with us. Well, maybe, but I would have had to do a lot of explaining. Besides, I hate to be taken for a sucker. This is one case I'd like to handle myself. You actually think that Senor Castillo is guilty? Mm, could be. However, I wouldn't worry too much about our Secret Service friend. He'll be along almost any time if I know anything about those fellows. I only hope we get there first. Hmm. Isn't this Castillo's studio? That's yes, right you are, Rusty. Let's go in. Yeah. Dark, isn't it? So all art galleries are like that, Rusty. They want nothing to detract from the painting. Oh, oh Dr. Denfield. Welcome, welcome. You must like my little studio. <laughs> You're back so soon. Yes, indeed, Senor. That, uh, that was an artistic piece of work I got the other day. 
I wouldn't at all be surprised, but it uh, might excite interest in some very high place. I am so happy you like it. Yeah, like isn't exactly the word. Uh, and uh, the young lady? Oh, oh your pardon, Senor Castillo. This is my secretary, Rusty Fairfax. Rusty, Senor Raymond Castillo. I am charmed. Thank you, Senor. And now, how can I be of service? Another flambeau, perhaps? No, no, not exactly. Today, I'm interested in another form of art. Bogus $10 bill. B bogus? <laughs> what is it you mean, uh, bogus? Counterfeit, my dear senor. Uh, you remember the painting I purchased here the other day? Oh, but of course, an excellent choice. And I paid cash, a $500 bill. And I received eight new $10 bills and change. They were counterfeit. What the deal? No, no, it could not be. But it could, and uh, they were. Oh, but surely, Senor Dante, you do not now, believe... Now, 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 don't get excited. All I want you to do is tell me where they came from. It's as simple as all that. Oh, but it is not so simple. I have made several sales since and before then. They might have come from anywhere. Surely you don't always get new bills, Senor. Think. Can't you remember? <gasps> but wait. Yes? Senor, at this moment, I remember how the new bills came to me. Oh, fine. I'll tell it to you, will you? I uh, found them. What? You found them? Oh, come now. Well, I do not wonder that you are surprised, but it is the truth. Hmm, that's very interesting. Fortunately, I have the proof. How in the world could anyone prove that anyone found anything? Oh, that you shall see, senorita. If you will, but wait here one moment, please. Hmm. Sounds awfully fishy to me. Well, don't be hasty, Rusty. I'm betting he'll show us some proof. Get who's coming in. Rusty, don't whistle. Oh. Oh, -ho. good afternoon, Senora Castillo. The good part of it walked out when she walked in. Rusty. Well, an art gallery isn't quite the place to wear such a revealing negligee, is it? Or is it? You'll uh, pardon my secretary, senora. She's a little embarrassed. Oh, please don't call me senora. I'm not Spanish. I was born in Brooklyn. Oh, oh sorry. But uh, you are senora, I mean, Mrs. Castillo. Yeah, though so I'm not bragging about it. Who's your dressmaker, darling? I like that thing you almost have on. Don't be catty, sister. I... Uh, oh, what's the use? I know I shouldn't be out here. But I just had to talk to somebody. Now, wait a minute. I didn't mean to. Oh, it's all right. I saw Raymond leave, and I thought I'd get a chance to... No, forget it. It's no use. Well, now, if you need some kind of help, I would be on... Maria! What are you doing here? Uh, and in that attire? Uh, I'm sorry, Raymond. I looked out the door, and these people were here, and I thought they were customers, and... I guess it's kind of stop. Go back to your room at once. Yes, Raymond. Well, I like that, Dan. You Rusty, to... this is none of your business. But, but Rusty. Rusty! Oh, well. And now, Senor Dunfield, here is the proof you asked. Uh, oh. th this envelope and this paper. The envelope? Yes, it uh, was in the envelope that I found the money uh, three weeks ago. And the newspaper? Uh, read right here, uh, in the lost and found card. Oh. Yeah, this paper is dated December 20th. Found this morning on 7th Avenue near 14th Street, an envelope containing a sum of money. Owner can claim by describing envelope and naming denomination of bill. Well. <laughs> so you see, I did everything possible to locate the rightful owner. I never dreamed that it was, as you as you say, uh, bogus. Oh? <laughs> and now may I have the paper in the envelope, back, please? Oh, surely, surely. Here you are. Uh, there were no papers in the envelope that might give us a clue as to the owner? No, none. Well, I guess that's that. Guess we'll have to go back and take your medicine, Dan. <laughs> Yes, senor. Uh, you're senor Ramon Castillo? At your service, senor. Well, I'm mainly the United States Treasury Department. Oh? Oh, but surely there is nothing in my poor little shop. No, 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 no. I'm looking for a party of Dr. Danfield. I have reason to believe... Dr. Danfield. Uh, oh, I am so sorry, senor Maynard. Uh, uh, Dr. Danfield left a half hour ago. <laughs> How did you get away? Oh, I begged Raymond to let me come. I told him if he was going to keep me cooped up, he could at least get me something to read. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Now tell me what's happened. Oh, I'm so excited. A lot. But none of it's too good. Did Dr. Danfield uh, come to the shop? Yeah, he was there. Uh, good, good, good. Was he uh, suspicious? I think so at first. 
And then Raymond showed him the envelope and the newspaper, and he seemed to think it explained everything. Oh, my dear. And I suppose he went away, huh? Yeah, he left. A bad darn. We, we were crazy to try it this way. The other way would have been much more direct, and now Danfield's gone, and... Completely fooled, I think. Oh, no, I don't think so, my dear. <laughs> That's not the way it happens in the best detective books. Oh, no. Dr. Danville will be back. I love that man. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm still shut up in Raymond's gilded cage. Uh, look, not for long, my sweet. The way things are shaping up, I think before long, I can promise you a lovely, a lovely murder. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... And now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Dan, do you think our little boy, red, white, and blue, is still here? Well, I doubt it. I don't think I hit him that hard. Now we'll see. Yep, he's gone. What a guy. Lock the door after him, too. Well, what do you say? Let's get busy. I'll take the desk. You look through the waste paper desk. Dan, I can't get over the way Castile's wife acted. He must have a lot of power over her. He was absolutely cruel. And all the signs show that she's beginning to resent it, too. There, Rusty, is a typical example of what we're talking about. Why women shoot their husbands. Oh, you, you found it, yet? Wait a minute. Yeah, I think so. Is this what you want? Yes, yes. It's the envelope which contained a circular advertising Barton Drake's new book. Here, take a look at the postmark of the envelope. It's dated December the 24th. Well, what's funny about that? Well, yeah, the circular was advertising the book as a Christmas present. It was just after Christmas. And the fact that Tristan didn't mail it until the 24th proves that he knew I wouldn't receive it until after Christmas. Therefore, I wouldn't have any use for the book for a present. Oh, what in the world would he do that for? Yeah, he wanted to get me in his store for some reason or another. Tristan's a psychological case himself, you know. He's a frustrated detective, if I ever saw one. <laughs> yes, he was sure I'd notice that date and come running. No, I still think it's just a coincidence. There are already too many coincidences in this case to ignore another one. Such as what? Such as the flap on that envelope Senor Castillo showed us. It's never been sealed. And that three-week-old newspaper must have been lying around mighty handy. But what's the tie-up between the bookstore and Senor Castillo? Well, I'm not sure. There must be one somewhere. Tristan must have known that I had bought the painting. He must, too, have known that I had the counterfeit money. So he used a smart trick to get me into a store, hoping that I'd buy a book with one of the bills. Well, it's all darn me. What do we do now? We're going to the newspaper office and put an ad in the classified column. Something like, uh, wanted a counterfeiter. Would applicant please oblige by giving himself up? I'm sorry, sir, we can't possibly run your ad for at least three days. Mm. Three days? Dan, won't that be too late? Yes, yeah, quite right, Rusty. By that time, I won't need it. Oh, miss, isn't there a chance of breaking the rules? It isn't a question of breaking the rules, young man. Everyone has to wait their turn. Yes, yes, I understand. You're on. Well, come along, Rusty. I got what I wanted. As usual, the wanted columns were not found wanting. <laughs> oh, I had you no better than to come here. Well, uh, I had to, Marie. I simply had to. But Raymond only stepped out for a minute. I know. I was uh, casing the place. I saw him leave. I came to tell you that, that I'm going to the police. Oh, we can't do that. He'll kill me. No, he won't. Because you're coming with me. But why don't we wait until Dr. Dan... I'm afraid Dr. Dan Jay didn't catch on. He did the secret servicemen. Our plan didn't work out at all like I read the book. Oh, well, all right. Oh, kiss me, darling. I'm going to need all the strength I can get. <laughs> I love you. Simply love you. If Rumble could only paint a picture like that. Um, Raymond, where did you did come from? You never hear of back doors, my sweet. Here, uh, now, look here. You have so this is your lover, my dear. This little insignificant book for this, this pipsqueak, this... Don't you dare stick a Thaddeus like that. Maria, go to your room. I will not. He wanted me around for the last time. Thaddeus and I love each other. Nothing you can say or do will keep us apart. I think this will accomplish that purpose, my dear. Oh, again. Oh, isn't this exciting? Uh, but you wouldn't shoot. 
They never do. Don't they? <laughs> uh, stop sniveling, you little fool. I only shot you through the arm. Oh, I suppose this is my own fault. I was foolish to allow Marie to visit the bookshop. But this is America, senor. A wife is a wife in any country, my friend. Something to be cherished and protected. Oh, it's too bad. Now you both must be destroyed. My, my honor permits no other solution. But, but, but Marie isn't to blame. Now, why don't you... Uh, uh, precede me, please. Down the steps. Wait a minute. A customer. The customer can wait. Yeah, perhaps it's Dr. Dandrew, Marie. I knew he'd come back. I do not think so, my little friend. I was quite prepared for your senor Danfield. No, my dears. I'm afraid your plan to get rid of me failed miserably. Now, March. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anybody here, Dan. Yeah, well, there must be. Senor Castillo wouldn't leave all these valuables unattended. Oh. Dan, wasn't that a shot? It was, unless an engine backfired in the basement. Come on, we better hurry. Now, yeah, this looks like it might be a door over here. Yes, yes, here are the steps. You stay up here, Rusty. I told you to stay upstairs, Rusty. I kind of wish I had. Look. Oh, we'll line up with you, Doctor. You also, Beatrice Fairfax. Oh. Ah, that is better. Thank you. Oh, Rusty, I'm all kinds of a fool. Oh, Dan, poor Mr. Tristan. He's bleeding. Oh, nothing serious, my dear. I just shot him through the other arm to render him incapable of action. Little men are so rash, you know. Well, I guess you win, Raymond. But, uh, I'm sorry I got you into this, Dr. Danfield. Uh, I thought I was being clever. From now on, I... Uh... I'll stick to selling books. Mm. Must I remind you that for all of you, there will be no from now on? Oh, Dan, look at all this machinery. Never mind the machinery. Presses, Rusty. It takes presses to print counterfeit bills. You uh, didn't by any chance print that newspaper, too, did you, senor? Only part of it, senor doctor. Yeah, oh. I thought so. Nice to know these things before we die, you know. You are, of course, going to kill us. Yes, yes, I have no other choice. Now, let me see. I think Marie shall be the first. Dan, are you going to let him? Of course not. I'll at least put up a fight. Ready, Marie? Drop the gun, Castillo. What? Oh. Drop it! Quick! Well. Well, I thought it was about time you were getting here. Rusty, Rusty, where are your manners? Say hello, it's your friend, little oh. boy red, white, and blue. <laughs> In a moment, we return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Dan. But first... And now for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Well, Doctor, I finally caught up with you. Hmm. Oh, thank heavens you did, Mr. Maynard. But how? Well, after I missed you here before, I simply stood in the doorway across the street and watched the place. Oh, as simple as that, huh? You uh, should have let me in on it, though. <laughs> after the sock I gave you, don't be foolish. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Well, anyway, it turned out all right. But uh, I'd like to have all the information from my report. Well, I think perhaps that Marie here can tell you more than I. Uh, Mrs. Castillo? Yes. Well, to begin with, I married the guy because he was so polite, I guess. And then, then, too, he had a lot of money. Yeah, I guess that must have been it. I must have married him for his money. Hey, does it go on? After I married him, though, he changed. He kept me cooped up all the time. Wouldn't let me see anybody except the few people I got to wait on in the shop. Oh, he spent money on me like mad, but I wanted a little freedom. <laughs> it sounds uh, familiar, doesn't it, Rusty? Mm -hmm. About the only place I was allowed to visit was Dad's bookshop. I guess it was only natural that I grew to hate my husband and began to love Thad. You uh, knew, of course, that your husband was manufacturing this counterfeit money. Not at first, until I began to wonder where all the money came from. There just wasn't that much business in the studio. And then one day I discovered the presses. Well, why didn't you go right to the police? I realize now that I should have, but I talked it over with Thad and... He thought we ought to do it like they do in detective stories. Yes, I, I love detective stories. I simply love them. And we saw a chance when Dr. Danfield came in to buy the flambeau. I was able to give him the counterfeit bills and change, and 
from there on, Thad did the rest. Yes, I knew that if I could get you to spend one of the bills in my store and then notify the authorities, you would be angry and trace the bills to their source. And, and we wanted to do it in such a way that Raymond would never suspect that we were responsible. Yes, but that fake lost and found item of your husband's nearly threw us off the trail entirely. Oh, no, 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 Rusty, that's where you're wrong. It was that ad that put me right on the trail. It did? Well, of course. Didn't you hear the girl at the classified desk say that all ads had to be turned in at least three days before publication? Well, yes. Well, the advertisement that Castillo showed us stated that he had found an envelope with valuable contents that morning. I know that. And how could he have stated that he found it that morning and had to get his advertising copy into the paper three days before? Oh, why, Dan, that's right. That's pretty good thinking, Dr. Danby. Oh, Danny, you're wonderful. Yes, yes, I am. But uh, I'm afraid I can't take all the credit this time. Why not? Well, you see, Thaddeus Tristan and I have both read the same book in which there's a case just like this one. It's uh, by Barton Drake. You can buy it for $3. <laughs>